Hey, it's Nikachu Merfolk Master, and today we're going to be playing some Legacy Merfolk because I have uh, an NRG series Legacy open to play in Minneapolis. So I got to play some Legacy. I haven't played for a year, so let's get into it. Now, for the most part, there there has been some huge changes to Legacy Merfolk, uh, or even its positioning. I actually just straight up stopped playing the format when Lord of the Rings came out because Orcish Bowmasters just annihilated the better cards of the deck. I think Silvergill Adept in uh, Legacy is amazing because there's a lot of matches that are still like one for one. You feel that in the control matchups, the Delver matchups, some of the, uh, maybe not just exactly the combo, like sometimes some of the combo matchups as well. Whereas now when Bowmasters came out, Silver Guild Up was useless. Also, Mistcaller was very good versus Reanimator, Show and Tell, um, many different, uh, the, the Breakfast deck that also got killed off. So, we gotta go back to the drawing board, and the drawing board is I'm gonna play with Dock Hand, because this deck still needs to have some sort of one drop to enable Hex Catcher, and also just give yourself some sort of clock to cleanly uh, finish off your opponent. Not to mention, like, the tap target land thing, uh, I guess it's a little cut off here. Here, let's pull it up here. The, the tap target land is not useless. If you're up against lands, you might choke them on Thespian stage for a turn. You can tap down a Maze of Eth before you, like, swing in with everything. Uh, in, con in conjunction with Wasteland, you could really put a hurt on your opponent if you clearly see that they're mana screwed. So, I mean, Rishan Dockhand is not going to be completely useless. Uh, not to mention you can tap down Soul Lands and so on. So, you know, you could, it, it could actually end up uh, siphoning people's mana. It's not really want it, what I want it for, but it's just a one drop with two toughness that can get it out of range of Bowmasters, which is played by almost everything. Uh, now, another big innovation to the deck, I should say innovation, an upgrade that we got was Tishana's Tie Binder. This card's amazing! Like, it's really, really good, and if you're playing Merfolk properly, the game is going to be slow. You are going to get to turn three eventually, otherwise True Name Nemesis would be completely useless. I was even experimenting with, like, tons of three drops a year ago, and I found that you're playing with, like, ten three drops is not unplayable. Like, it's totally fine. So, uh, playing with Tishana's Tie Binder, I hope is going to be an amazing upgrade. You get, uh, like, what do you interact with? You can inter interact with, like, all the ETBs of a reanimator deck. You can uh, interact with, like, you know, um, basically every ETB that there might be from Beanstalk, whether it be, uh, what's it called, the... Let me just pull up a Beanstalk. I mean, you can hit Orcish Bowmasters, Leyline Binding. You can hit uh, Territorial Cavu when it attacks. So there is a lot of uh, interaction there. I mean, every there's a lot of triggers and ETBs in this game. So Tishana's Tie Binder, I'm hoping, is going to be like a bombshell card for this deck. Now, I don't know the exact configuration of the sideboard. I haven't played Legacy in... A year, so I'm just gonna blindly go with force negations and extra wasteland. We have three wasteland in the main because my experience in modern has told me that um, four colorless sources is actually too much. If you don't, if you're not playing with silver gill adept, there's just too many blue blue cards in the deck, and you just cannot afford to have too much brown mana, or you just get completely screwed. So I'm only gonna have three here. Gonna put the extra fourth wasteland in the sideboard. There is a world maybe I should, I because we are playing with a slightly higher curve with Tashana's Tidebinder, that the fourth wasteland should be in the main, and I should have one less dock hand because I don't honestly need four four dock hands. Three is enough, in my opinion. The extra island walk is nice, though. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll start with this and figure it out later. Especially since Wasteland is like a pseudo land, pseudo strip. It's not strip mine. Sinkhole, for example. Well, strip mine is also fine. Uh, two surgical extraction, two dismember, two hydroblasts. It's possible I should have three hydroblasts, three dismember. I don't know. The, a lot of red permanents out there. If your opponent plays Leyline of the Guild Pack, everything is red. Blow anything up. Uh, two Trickster, not in love with Trickster, never have, uh, it's getting weaker in Modern, I'm assuming it's gonna get weaker in Legacy, but it's still good enough to bring in versus Dragon Rage Chandler decks. Uh, two Chalice of the Void, usually to play on zero, actually almost, almost exclusively to play on zero. Uh, I don't know if it's new, needed or not in Null Rod. And with that, let's get into a League. We won the Die Roll, which is a very convenient thing to have coming back to Legacy. Uh, I have a hand of spells and cards, we're gonna keep it. Uh, I'm gonna start off with island almost always start off with island. I mean like if this thing gets force of <laughs> force of willed like who cares? Because uh, if you start off with cavern of souls or Ottawa or something and uh, They have wasteland that just really sucks You always save your cavern of souls for the moment that you have to play your big bomb card whether it be true name nemesis You got to save that thing. So we are up against a blue deck or hopefully I mean, I don't know 
Could be just a green deck playing Misty Rainforest. No, it's blue. Now we got a Brainstorm. Sure. Probably what's going to happen is I'm going to go Wasteland the Underground and then play Tide Shaper just for a blue. Probably that's what's going to happen. They drew three cards. Then they put two back on top. We have another Lord. It's fine. Um, okay, let's just attack for one. Now it's very important, very, very important you Wasteland first. Because if they play, <laughs> if I played Tide Shaper first and they dazed it, that would really suck. Now my Tide Shaper is only going to be a 1-1, one, one, but if they want to put more blue mana back on the battlefield, it'll get upgraded to a 2-2, two, two, so that'll be good. And very likely that's exactly what they'll do. Uh, they're going to wait on that at the, for the moment. I have Dismember. I have a feeling it's useless. I, I mean, it might not be Stone Cold useless in this matchup, but uh, probably it's not in a good position. Okay, we'll play a Lord. Lord of Atlantis. Buff for our team. Attack for four. Right now, I don't know what my opponent is on. Um, could be Reanimator. It could be Delver. A lot of decks that play Fetchlands, Underground Sea, and Brainstorm. So not much has been revealed so far. I could look at... I mean, it's pretty important in Legacy to look up your opponent's Surveil. I have no idea how common or uncommon this is in Legacy at the moment. Probably there's one in every deck. Okay, they kept it on top. Next turn, I'll have the option to play Mass of the Pearl Trident and then uh, hold up my Dock Hand to tap their land, just in case they absolutely need the mana. The more cantrips they play, the more likely I'm leaning that they are some sort of combo deck. Okay, they stacked everything on top. Ooh, Bayou. What does that mean? A Chrome Box. Are we going for it? Are we going for it? Can I kill them next turn? No. No, I cannot. Like, it's a two turn clock anyway. Uh, or is it? Okay, hold on. It's four. I'm hitting them for three, six, ten. Yeah. What was this? Echo of Eons! That might be slightly concerning. So we're only going to attack with for 7. Because it's a 2 turn clock no matter what. So I would rather siphon them. So they have all the blue mana. They don't have that much green mana. So that's what we're going to hit with the dock hand. Might as well. End of turn Brainstorm. So whatever they got to do, they got to do it next turn. They have a grip full of cards, though, so. Why not? And their hand apparently is pretty stacked. They surveilled to the top. They pondered to the top. Right, look at that. Rishin Port on a creature. Port's still good in this game. I have two cards in hand. I wish they were Force of Will and a blue card. They could not be further from anything useful. All right, they fetched. Uh, I don't know. Do they fail to find, or they're just like, ah, this is pointless. All right, we won the first game. What the hell is my opponent on? What has Bayou? Is that a Doomsday deck? Does Doomsday have Bayou? Looking at a Doomsday deck. I don't see Bayou in it, though. Unless this is like a variation. The Epic Storm, maybe? It does play Chromox. Oh, it does play Echo of Eons, too. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is the Epic Storm. Uh, Bryant Cook Classic. Um... So what do we want here? We want Tashana's Tidebinder. That's going to be really good for hitting the Storm Trigger. I think we also want Force of Negation. 
We want also uh, Chalice of the Void to play on zero to interact with uh, Mox Opal, Lotus Petal, and Chromox. Also, Null Rod is very good. Now, generally speaking, when I bring in Null Rod, I like to take out Ether Vials and replace it with Lands. I guess that's the best I can do at the moment. I might take out a second Ether Vial because it's such a non-bow with this card. Can't remember. Is Surgical Extraction good? I don't think so. I think Hydro Blast is good. Burning Wish. Does interact with Galvanic Relay very well, though. It's Burning Wish. I don't think that's enough. Cards I don't want. True Name Nemesis is very expensive and clunky and completely unnecessary. Uh, I don't believe... can't remember. Sometimes they bring in a creature, don't they? I always take out, like, my... I have on multiple occasions taken out my, like, removal, like Dismember, and then they bring in some sort of creature that says, all right, you can't play spells on your turn, <laughs> or something to that effect. Uh, Trickster is not bad, but I don't have nothing to take out here. What does Surgical Extraction do? It interacts, it sort of interacts with Echo if I can hit it immediately, but if they have the mana, then I'm screwed. I can't interact with it at all. Hmm. Hmm. I don't remember. I, I might just, just leave it as it is. I usually like to fight over their mana because they don't have it all. If they don't have enough mana, they don't really get to do anything. So maybe we'll just submit the deck like this. Maybe it could be a little bit better, though. This is not a really good hand. It lacks blue cards. I might mulligan this. Like, uh, especially, like, these Storm decks can fight through one Force of Will pretty well. So I, I find, you know, Chalice on zero to be a hell of a lot more powerful card. Well, the Wasteland sort of sort of helped us in game one. Since we're on the play, on the draw, this is going to be a lot worse. I think I'm going to mulligan this. I think we can do a little bit better. That's a lot worse. We're going to five. Now, the good news is that cards like Null Rod are such heavy hitters. Okay, I just have to keep this. We'll keep, we'll toss the more expensive cards. Keep the cheaper one. Do I get rid of Force of Will? Maybe not. Do we have an extra blue card to pitch? We pitch it. If we don't, we screw. That's okay. But uh, throwing Force of Will away is pretty reasonable. Go turn one Dock Hand, turn two Hex Catcher, and just go Lord, Lord. We need a land anyway. Okay, we mulligan a five. Did they mulligan a five? I don't think so. No, they kept six. They're at four cards. One, two, five, six. They chose not to use the Ponder ability, so they're going to keep everything on top. Good for them. Okay, I got another Force of Will, which I will use to pitch on the other Force of Will. So I need to draw land by next turn to have a... Yeah, I mean, honestly, actually, if I don't draw a land, um, it is possible that this I can just start porting my opponent down for a few turns, but it's obviously not an ideal place to be. I'd rather just ha have a bunch of creatures on the board and attack, attack, attack. Okay, we get at least one. I don't expect my opponent to combo off next turn, so I'm going to play um, Master first, then Hex Catcher. The reason for that is that uh, this just deals more damage. It'll deal one extra point of damage, because when I get the Hex Catcher out, this will attack for three, instead of me playing Hex Catcher first into Lord, and I only attack for two. Like, if my opponent can just combo off in the face of a Force of Will, then, like, sure. Okay, go for it. Okay, it looks like they're doing it. Or I guess they're going to play Galvanic Relay here. Dark Ritual. Something's going to happen here. Burning Wish. Okay, I have to counter this. Um, oh, they're holding priority. Oh, they're holding priority, dumping their Lion's Eye Diamond. 
which is the tendrils. Yeah, we can enforce this. Uh, good question. Do I keep... We're definitely countering this. Do I keep the other force of will for another random card? No, I think I don't. Um, by playing Hexcatcher, I believe it's a two-turn It's a two turn clock. Attack for six to go to ten. The next turn I have eight. Oh, it's close. Um, but the Hexcatcher itself is some insurance. Okay, now that is a kill. We were lucky they had a Burning Wish hand, not a Galvanic Relay hand, and then we won the match. All right, that's round one. Let's get into round two. We won another die roll. Um, hand has no one drop, but we do have Force of Will, so I'll keep it. We're at least curving into Lord of Atlantis. So one of two things are going to happen. We're either ideally going to draw a two drop Merfolk or one drop Merfolk, or we're going to draw our third land for a Tish Tishanda's Tide Binder. One or the other. One or the other. We're up against a forest and a mana bond. At the beginning of your end step, if you may reveal your hand and put all land cards from it onto the battlefield, if you do discard your hand. That sounds evil. Um, this is lands, right? Yeah, I don't think I want to. I was thinking, do I force a will, chuck something else away? But I don't think I want to force a will again. I believe they have Wasteland, so I, I gotta be careful here. Ooh, I can interact with Wasteland with my Tidebinder. I can interact with Wasteland. You have my oh you have my mulch, reveal the top four cards you live with put all land cards to your hand, put the rest in the graveyard. Is that a lands card these days? Crop rotation. So far it's all lands like stuff. So they have Field of the Dead and Wooded Foothills. And mulch and crop rotation went to the graveyard. So we'll take our turn, uh, attack for two. Throw to Tishana's Tide Binder at the end of their turn. I mean, if we get to hit something with this Tide Binder, that's great. Uh, if we don't, that's fine too. Uh, but I do need to get the pressure on the board. Uh, I don't want to wait too long versus this type of deck. Uh, they'd be very wise to crack their foothills now. I might not know what this deck is. I don't really remember Mulch being a, a card in the lands deck. Maybe this is some sort of weird Field of the Dead deck. They do not crack their wooded foothills. Well then! You will be punished. Punished! Put your mana base back to the Stone Age. Yeah, that's a classic thing, actually, with Tishana's Tidebinder. You get to stifle people. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll play Wasteland. And uh, they didn't do anything last turn. So I imagine they're not going to do anything now either. Oh, they actually didn't need to crack the Wooded Foothills because of the um, additional cost to cast. Oh, they cracked... Additional cost to cast the sacrifice land, search library for a land card, put that card on the battlefield. Oh, that's so weird. Oh, they cracked the wooded fit hills, I get it. Um Yeah, that's a spell. I can't interact with that. Are you gonna get another Yavamaya? Dark Thefts. Okay, we can hold down the fort. What is going on here? Another crop rotation, sure. I guess it's gonna be Thespian stage. Sure. Okay, uh, there's a... So I can counter this. I just don't know exactly which one I'm supposed to do. Okay, hold on. Thespian Stage becomes a copy of target land, except it has this ability. So I believe I'm supposed to let that resolve, because then the Dark Depth... It will kill off one of the Dark Depths. Then, when Dark Depths has no ice counters on it, sacrifice it, create a 2020 Merit Lage token. I think it's at this point... Do I counter this? Or does it like trigger permanently? I don't get it. Maybe I screwed this up. Maybe I screwed this up. 
because it's it's going to perpetually have no counters on it, right? When it has no ice counters on it, sack it. I don't I don't remember how Stifle interacts with this interaction. Maybe I screwed this up. Yeah, like happens anyway. Uh huh. Well, their hands seem to be very good anyway. <laughs> Uh, uh, last time I played with Stifle in Legacy was like more about 10 years ago. So it becomes a copy of Target Land, except it uh, has this ability. I thought there was like a good moment to interact, but I guess not. So what am I supposed to do? I guess I just have to counter it for a turn. I said like I screwed up to my opponents. They're like, yeah, have me in Vintage Cube too. <clears throat> I guess I just have to counter the uh, Thespian Stage activated ability. And then that's it. And then they have to do it next turn. And what was I going to draw? Whatever, there's there's still games two and three to go. Okay, uh, we're up against land, so Wasteland, Wasteland, good! Um, dismember, bad. Surgical Extraction, very good. Because if you, if there's a land in the graveyard, uh, you can surgical extract it, and then there's you don't have to deal with that thing for the rest of the game. I can't remember if Chalice of the Void does anything. Chalice on one is awkward. Chalice on zero is awkward. Chalice is useless. Force negation, good, because it can hit uh, Light from the Loam. I can't remember if Trickster... Trickster is fine, actually, because you can uh, interact with the... Um, the Merit Lage for a turn or two, that's fine. Okay, Tishaw's Tie Binder, I think is excellent. We had two of them that game, it was useless. If we had a one drop, that could have changed everything because that would have dealt a lot more damage. And we could have definitely afforded to um, counter that ability once. Hmm. Okay, what to take out? Tie Chaper is gonna be good, Dock Hand, Probably is okay. I'm not sure. I know Trunanos is, is very, very important. Cannot be targeted by Maze of Ith. Cannot be targeted by a lot of things. Do I have to get rid of the Tidebinder? I don't really want to get rid of Tidebinder. I don't want to get rid of this either. I also don't want to get rid of my one drops. Maybe I have to get rid of Tidebinder. Or I have to get rid of some... Or I, maybe I'm overrating the Trickster. Because I do want pressure. I definitely need to get out of range. Well, I, I, don't, I didn't see any red, so there's no Punishing Fire. Maybe we'll get rid of one of the one drops. And hope this is good enough. Hydroblast, no, 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 no. Okay. I'd like to keep. To, uh, okay, this hand's bad. Mulligan. Hand is better. Uh, it's better. We'll keep. And. Sort of want to keep everything. Can't do that, though. No, we can't keep everything around here now, can we? I think Force of Will is very important. The problem... So, here's my dilemma here. This is a mulligan hand, so whatever... If I get rid of something, let's say Lord of Atlantis. Like, what am I pitching to this Force of Will? But on the other hand, Force of Will is, like, pretty good at, like, you know, keeping your head above water in this type of matchup. Like, counter crop rotation. Okay, I guess we'll get rid of... Maybe Tide Shaper. Okay, I'll get rid of Tide Shaper, even though that looks like a pretty good way to interact with the game. There's no... Um, there's no guarantee that I can play that on turn two because this is a one land hand so I don't want to throw it out there as a one one so I might as well just maximize my power that I have here we're going to maximize the power and I know your name nemesis is so impactful in this matchup that if I, there is something I need to force I'll probably force pitch anything but the true name I'll tick the vial up to three if I have to this is just like untouchable the true name nemesis Another vial. How inconvenient. But if I was... You know what? The best time to get a turn two vial is when I had a turn one vial. 
Oh god, I s clicked through everything. <laughs> I have, I like, I F6 to not expecting to get, like, Force of Vigor there. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I can't exile this. Alright, you get a ma Maze of Ith. I got a Wasteland. Uh, which is pointless, so we just have to hold on to this. Boseju, who endures, exploration. See, I don't mind if you Boseju my stuff. Like, that's okay. That's fair game. That's totally fair game. These Life from the Loams are not very good right now, which is to our benefit. Maybe in response to Life from the Loam, I should have played Hexcatcher, because now my opponent has the option to go, like, Crop Rotation. Force of Will. Um, attack for one. Attack for one, we gotta start somewhere. Life from the Loam. Getting Thespian Stage, Boseju, yeah. There's a Maze of Ith. This Tishana's Tide Binder would be great. If I had some lands to cast it with. Like, I have to save Wasteland for something like uh, Tabernacle of Pendril Vale, for example. Okay, you get... Was there Wasteland in there? Oh, there was Wasteland. Oh, okay. I, I think I'm just screwed then. We're gonna upkeep hit my cavern, and I just cannot interact with this. I'll just concede. Concede in shame. A lot of small punts, but I think I was, like, more or less behind. Against lands... Uh, I, I'm more likely to win if I curve out, uh, that would be convenient, and in both games it was a little bit clunky, no turn one play in game one, and, uh, game two get completely blown out by Force of Vigor. I'm wondering, if I had the option, should I force? Probably I have to, or I just don't play the game. I don't know, it's, it's, it's tough. They two for one themselves, probably was still worth two for one myself to keep my damn vials on the board. Okay, let's go into round three. Another day, we win another die roll. Uh, hand's a bit sketch, but we are going to keep it. It's not really worth throwing away. It could end up being really good, but if we are up against, like, turn one wasteland, this hand is going to be awful. We're going to start off uh, with uh, uh, Rand, uh, just a blind Tide Shaper. Hopefully I don't regret that. Hopefully we're up against a blue deck, but it just helps us curve out a little bit better. Ooh, Urza Saga. Okay, I regret, because that could have been <laughs> turn two. Sa Hitting a Saga on turn two is usually just gravy. So uh, I think we're going to Wasteland that. Oh, actually, that's going to work out perfect. Because I have an Aether Vial to do uh, use my Cavern of Souls mana. What does this mean, or is this saga? Is this lands? I still don't know what any of this means. What does this mean? Tell me, opponent. What does this mean? All right. There's initiative. Oh, thought cast. Pay for. Uh, I think we're countering this. I think we counter this, then uh, wasteland this. And then put my opponent in the Stone Age. So effectively, they spent two cards. They spent two cards to get two cards. They can't storm off or anything. I'm going to keep them lower on resources. Okay, then. Resolves. Uh, 
I'm going to continue to keep their mana very low, though. Although these wastelands are way better used versus uh, Urza Sagas, like infinitely better used for those purposes. I don't remember what a thought cast deck looks like. Oh, Emery! That, uh, that is very lucky for me. Because I did not expect that this dismember would even have a target. Two Urza, two more Urza Sagas in the graveyard. That's actually very good for me. Then I have less to worry about Urza Saga from here on out. You know, I didn't think about it. It might have been better to dismember on my turn when I have uh, Hexcatcher active. Because there's only one mana. If my opponent has, like, Metallic Rebuke, that would might really, really suck. Okay, uh, I'm not going to play Hexcatcher just in case I really need to get this Force of Will online. So I'm going to forego one point of damage here. This game is not playing out how it usually is. Shadow Spear. I'm not in love with that card, but sure. Okay, let's see if we can speed up the clock. Also, the uh, if we can get our opponent's life total low enough, then maybe the Ancient Tomb will be a liability. True Name Nemesis is not bad. I'm actually willing to tick the Vile up to 3 for it. It's a pretty big, beefy creature. Just have to make sure like a thought cast doesn't get cast or something. Or maybe I'm just going to keep things as it is. I'm just going to force a will like the the, pert the per pertinent thing that they try to cast. Like a thought cast or something. I mean, they play any creature. I have to counter it. The Shadow Spear is, makes it pretty good. Oh, it looks like they tried to play thought cast. What, are they missing a mana? One, they one two sorry one two three four discount. Uh, so it costs only three one two three. Like what's wrong with that? Are they bluffing me or something? If I attack for three, put my opponent down to eight. I will have I won't have lethal next turn, so I'm just going to keep the true name in hand. Oh, that worked out. Uh, and I'll just put this in play. Or maybe they're trying to cast a spell. That doesn't make any sense. Is this still a deck, the 8-8 eight, eight cast? Or is it Patchwork Stompy now? Oh, maybe it's Patchwork Stompy. I've never heard of Patchwork Stompy, but apparently that fits the narrative as well. Thought Cast, Force Will, Metallic Rebuke. Basically the same stuff. Okay. So it is good versus Patchwork. Oh, it's Patchwork Automaton. That's why they call it Patchwork Stompy. So this can interact with Patchwork Automaton in, in some sense. In some sense. Um, Chalice on zero looks amazing. Null Rod looks amazing. Cutting some Ether Vials looks good. E Wasteland is also very important. We have to kill Emery. That is also very important. I don't know if Surgical Extraction interacts with them well enough. Force of Negation. What would we? What would we even use this on? don't think there's anything useful enough that I would use that on, so I'll forego that. Keep Dock Hand. Um, interestingly enough, they have one island in their deck. <laughs> Hard to get through, too. I have to cut four cards. Okay, I guess we're going to hit Trickster. Trickster's not completely useless in this matchup. Like, Trickster's never going to be useless when your opponent's playing with Urza Saga, but I'm still going to cut some. Maybe I cut all the Dock Hands. We need Tide Shaper for the Urza Saga. Wasteland for Urza Saga is good. Maybe Hexcatcher is not that good. Like, it pushes damage. I like that. Anything that pushes damage is great. I might be wrong about Null Rod. Null Rod is going to be great when it gets in play to shut off, like, all the mana. But if I recall correctly, like, but, you know, it's actually interesting. The opponent can do a lot, 
a lot with just a bunch of random artifacts in play. I've seen it happen. Okay, I guess we'll get rid of some dock hands. I'll trim maybe one tide binder. I hope I'm not getting that wrong. Tide binder is definitely okay. Or maybe we keep all tie binders. We keep three. Like, there's not that many things. Hold on, what patchwork requires a ward two. Maybe we can hit a patchwork. Maybe that's possible. Okay, we'll just submit this. I like Tashana's tie binder, but it might be clunky in this matchup. Because you like really need to curve into three lands. Um, and then interact with something. So maybe it's just the wrong thing to have in this matchup. Because they're pretty fast. This hand looks awful. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hope... I Ooh, the one island in their deck. Aether Spellbomb, sure. It's not going to be very strong versus my Aether Vial. Mind you, every artifact that is in play makes um, the rest of their cards that much easier to cast. There is an Urza Saga, which we can easily interact with. We have Wastelands for that. Uh, okay, yeah, this is worth forcing. This is just too strong. Too strong. If I had two extra mana, I would let it resolve and we dismember it, but I don't have two extra mana. Okay, we're playing the control game. Playing a little bit of the control game at the moment. Two islands! Okay, this one resolves. I wonder if they're going to bounce their own patchwork back to their hand. Tashana's tie binder. That's interesting. So what can happen is I can tick vial to three... Um, dismember the patchwork with the, the war trigger on the stack. I'll just activate Ether Vial and counter it. Uh, uh, I don't like that, but whatever. We have to deal with what we see here on the board. Ginger, okay, you can't activate Ether Spell Bomb now. What is this? As long as it, um, Sir Ginger, the meal ender, has trample, hexproof, and haste as long as the opponent controls a planeswalker. Whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a counter on Sir Ginger and scry one. So Saki, you gain life equal to its power, sure. Oh, this is a 3-1. It's a pretty big creature. That's pretty big. So we'll take Vile up to 3. Game's playing out pretty well for us. Uh, am I going to empty the hand? Probably. We can go Wasteland. I don't think they have their own Wastelands. We'll Dismember. It's going to be a Ward Trigger. Counter the Ward Trigger. Let this thing die. We do get that Scry, whatever. Whatevers. I'll play Lord and pass. So, in some sense, they're really the beatdown right now. I think they have better interaction on the battlefield. And um, also, they just have more cards than us. Our life total is lower. Well, they have their own dismembers. If they attack, I'll try to block. Can't really afford to do anything. Oh, that's interesting. How did I get two count? Oh no, I didn't get two counters. It's already a three one. So they can sack the spell bomb to just make this a six four. Yeah, draw a card, why not? This is bigger than I can block. 
You know, if they save the dismember, like I only have one card in hand, I think they should have attacked. And then when I blocked, they just completely blow me out. Dismember this, crack this, everything, and then just completely destroy me. I don't think any of that had to be done in advance. Like, what are you playing around? Just days, right? You have one mana up for that. Hexcatcher is a very lovely card, but not in the face of all this opposition. I think I'm just dead. Yeah, I don't really know what to do here. I think Amory is just going to run away with the game. Let's see. I, I don't know if their deck, how consistent their deck is with uh, what's the stock, so I'm just going to let them play out their deck and then eventually resign. To dismember is not unusual. Another patchwork automaton. Yeah, this card's good in modern, so there's no reason it wouldn't be good here. Like, I'm just lost. I can't force a will anywhere. I can't beat this thing. Um, I could flash something in. It doesn't really matter. They can bounce anything. Okay, I'm just going to concede. And hope for better in game three. Do I want to do anything different? How good is Trickster here? That better looks like a nice card, but it's just so hard to pull off. Chalice is definitely a nice card. And Null Rod. All right, hopefully these cards will be more useful to me. Hopefully I can get some more ha some Haymaker cards here. No Haymaker cards. I think I'm going to mulligan this. Too many lands. Uh, Force of Will pitching my only blue card. Not a good thing. Um... Well, I can do a lot with one mana. <laughs> I can play Dock Hands. I can play Dismember. Okay, I'm going to keep it, but like I am not in love with this at all. I just don't want to go to 5. Maybe it's maybe it's worth going to 5, I don't know. see how useful this card is okay we have our patchwork automaton it's already going to town yep what's interesting is uh you know even if i have chalice on zero i mean this entire interaction can still happen They know about my true name, Nemesis. Oh, no. Yeah, this is also not very good. All right. I'm lost. <laughs> uh, I, guess, I don't know. Should I mulligan the six? Like, it's a hand where I can cast, like, my cards. But it's not particularly great against such a, an explosive deck. I remember even before, like, this mono blue deck was pretty... It was pretty challenging to beat. Because it's like a it's like an affinity deck, right? But you know, I, I but I did have at the time like four null rods. Even though the null rods didn't always work, it like it was a pretty good card. But you know, your, your opponent could still do something like this, where they just make a gigantic patchwork automaton, and I'm still screwed. And still thought cast for one mana, thought monitor for one mana. Yeah, my hand was very very below average. Their hand is very very above average.
You got a 7-7. Seven, seven. Wasn't this legal, like, last year as well? Why didn't more people play this card? Or was it, like, just discovered or something? Yeah, okay, I'm just dead. I, like, I could, like, dismember Emery, but then I'm down to 9. I have to chump block a bunch. Um... Uh, dismember yeah i'm just too far behind let's just move let's move on to uh let's move on to round four how about that that sounds like a good idea round four it is i lost the die roll uh hands awful absolutely awful opponent says hi to youtube they like saying hi to youtube uh, we're definitely going to mulligan this. It's just a one-lander. Uh, not a one-lander, so we'll keep. Keep, I guess, throw away one Tide Binder. Sort of don't want to throw away the Vial. Sort of don't want to throw away any of the creatures. But I don't want to throw away any of the lands. Always got to remember, there's more, there's more spells than lands in your deck. There's always more spells than lands. So let's hope we draw them spells. And let's also hope we don't get hit by Wasteland. Especially Force of Will into Wasteland. I, you know, when I'm all gonna... The Force of Will is such an awkward card in Legacy. Because you need it. But at the same time... Uh, you don't really want to draw it against any deck that's fair. Don't... Flexes their underground sea. Uh, all right, so we are probably. Do I defend this? My opponent's saying. Maybe I don't defend this. Okay, I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to. I could defend. Cause they're sort of telling me they're going to wasteland me next turn. Exactly as I had uh, f uh, foreseen. So they have one mana, but... Okay, so if I force this, pitching Tide Binder, can at least, like, curve my creatures out against some random stuff. The thing is, like, Force of Will is best used, generally speaking, versus, like, you know, Delver of Secrets or, or something. Well, if they do have Waste, if this doesn't resolve and they have Wasteland, I guess I'm screwed. I guess I, I'm going to counter this. I really need this Aether Vial to resolve. If they have a lot of counter spells, um, like, I would be in a lot of trouble. All right, we stole the play. We stole the play. Okay, they did have Wasteland. It's like, if you make a play like that, like dazing on the play, setting yourself behind, you usually you have a backup plan with it. And they wanted to make us mana-less. That was the plan. So at least we get to play the game. Uh, that's sort of cute that we drew this Tide Shaper. If I can file that in play. It's probably going to eat up a removal spell or something. Take up to two. Another f against Delver decks, you do not want to draw Force of Will. It's a, it's a card we're going to be siding out actually. So I don't want to expose my better creatures to like a fatal push or something. So I'm not. I actually don't know what's pretty standard. What's the removal suite here? Oh, there is actually no fatal push. It's like lightning bolt still. Actually, I cannot even be certain 
what the hell we are up against. Like, I assume it's like Grixis Delver, but I don't know for sure. And I'm going to do my best to play around um, Bowmasters, everything. Snuff out! It's dead. <clears throat> We're going to have to be really careful with that Hexcatcher. I'll definitely have to put a Master of the Pull Trident in play first. And again, don't do anything. Like, they probably had the snuff out last turn, but they didn't want to spend it on a Tide Shaper, and they know they have to hit the Lords. Oh, it's Death Shadow. Um... <clears throat> Okay. I might have to force pitch uh, hex catcher. Oh god. Um. Hmm. Plan has changed. Okay. Good question. Can I die? If I attack my opponent for five, go to five. These are eight eights. Attack me for 16. <clears throat> One fetch can kill me. But I can chump block. Although I don't want to chump block. Okay, hold on. I'm, I guess I'm going to play a hex catcher. And then figure it out. Join Island. That's not very useful right now. I can attack for six, put my opponent down to four. That makes these nine nines. If they attack with both, jump block with master. Interestingly, like, well. What could I do here? Attack for four. I can attack for nothing. I don't want to attack for nothing. I want to attack for something this turn. So I can threaten lethal the, the following turn. Okay, I think I figured it out. Um, <clears throat> we're going to attack for four. Put my opponent down to six. And if they want to attack with both, I can chump block with hex catcher. <clears throat> and um I'll, I'll I can attack back for six. Assuming they don't have uh bow masters. That might work. Uh, I don't think playing this island helps me in any way. So just keep it in my hand. Sort of banking on my opponent having like a lot of counter magic or something in their hand. <clears throat> Okay, here's the shock. They're actually okay. What, what does Bowmasters say? Orcish Bowmasters, because they can only attack me for 18 right now. There's the battlefield. Oh, I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking with Bowmasters, can they ping themselves to do lethal to me? But the fact of the matter is that um, uh, fact of the matter is they can just ping me for the last point of damage. So the deal is, if they have Bowmasters, I lose. If they don't have Bowmasters, I guess I win? Hold on, okay, what do I play around by uh, letting this through? 
I can play around another Death Shadow that would block, because I, I, I have unblockable creatures here. Uh, I play around a removal spell that they just drew, just in case it's like actual top deck snuff out. What else do I play around? If they have Bowmasters, it looks like I lose any either way, so I think I should take the 18 damage. To be honest, I'm not thrilled about taking this 18 damage because it look it really feel like the the way the game has played out, they could have had Bowmasters the entire time. There is not a moment in this game where they had a very good reason to ever play their Bowmasters. At least I don't think so. Or maybe no, maybe that's not true. Uh, I attacked with Tide Shaper alone many times. They they had many opportunities to like flash it in. Okay, I think I'm just going to take the 18 and hope they don't have Bowmasters. Because if they have Bowmasters anyway, it can. I, if I chump, they play Bowmasters, they can block Mass of the Pearl Trident. And, um... Oh no! This is lethal! Oh, I forgot. They just shot themselves down to four. Oh, I want to block! Okay, whatever. Okay, so apparently, uh... I don't die. I could block. I do beat a Bowmasters, if there's a singular one. Oh, I guess they don't have Bowmasters, because they would have just wind slammed that thing. Alright, uh, so I was playing around, but I, I could still beat this. I could beat any creature. Alright. I should block, though. Because this, uh... Oh, no, no, no! Sorry, this would get shrunk to a... I have to not block. It wouldn't be a 4-4. Four, four. Come on, Nikachu, wake up. Smell the coffee. I'm going to take this thing up to 3, so, just in case I draw a 3-drop for whatever reason. Uh, I did not... And uh, we will just attack with our creatures. Our measly little creatures with Island Walk. The best thing to draw... Actually, I don't know what I wanted. You want to snuff out? Snuff yourself out for lethal? That is a legal play. You can snuff yourself out for lethal. Um... Oh no! Okay, so Petty Theft. Bounces this, and I can't sack anything useful enough. Oh, I die anyway. This was not a card on my radar. The problem is, if I sack Hexcatcher, this thing shrinks to a 3-3. That's the problem. I don't think we were winning no matter how this game played out. At least in this game. So, my opponent takes 3. They don't die. So, we really need, we actually needed to top deck a, a Lord this game. Or that turn. Okay, we'll just concede. I have no means of interacting with any of this. Okay, let's bring in some interaction. Trickster is not the greatest, but it's better than nothing. Bring in Dismember. It can still hit like a Death Shadow. Uh, Wasteland is good in the matchup. Uh, do not bring in Chalice on one. Don't do it. Don't be tempted. Take out Force of Will. Take out one Dock Hand. And I think that's it. I think that's all we'll do. This is one of those matchups where uh, Silvergill Adapt was great. And we lost it. We don't have Silvergill Adept anymore. Big boo. Uh, it appears I don't really have any way to replace the Hex Catcher, so I just have to be very careful with it. I just came to realize that. Yeah, against Death Shadow, I have no means of... And I, I'm pretty sure they have it. Pretty sure Death Shadow plays... Plays Hex Catcher. Okay, we'll go first. That's fine. Keep. Lands and spells. These decks have Troll of Kazakh Dune, Street Wraith, Grief, 
right? One Brazen Bar, three Orcish Bowmasters, Stal Stalactite Stalker. All right. It's like blue black. It's like a blue black Delver deck of sorts. So they didn't shuffle. So what do they kept? They kept a Lord. Do we just start spitting out Lords? Maybe we start spitting out Lords. I mean, alternatively, you can play Trickster and um, try to incentivize them not to hit that thing. Wasteland. How rude. So I need one of any land to stay alive here. If you destroy, if you de at the beginning, if at the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, what does that mean? Descended. If you, uh, a permanent, if a ca permanent card was put into your graveyard from anywhere. Okay. So what you're telling me is I can dismember this thing. That's what you're telling me. Well, that's not good news. Um, I'm just thinking, should I dismember now or dismember? I think I should dismember now. And if they daze it, I can still attack into it with my dock hand. But um, dismembering now allows me to attack for four. Sort of don't understand why they play Polluted Delta um, before they play Brainstorm. Doesn't seem very necessary to me. I can't daze or anything. Oh, maybe they have Spell Pierce up just in case I'm going to force a will or something. Okay, we have a 2 2 Death Shadow. Oh, a card I really should side out is Tishana's Tide Binder, but I have like no means of discarding it in any way. Uh, I draw a Tide Shaper, which is uh, not what I want. I guess it's better than drawing a two drop. Well, I'm vulnerable to a snuff out or something. No, no snuff out. Perfect. Feel like I'm getting legacied here. I got wastelanded. Uh, I drew a card with ponder. It doesn't say what they did with the ponder. Do they shuffle or what? Okay, they're gonna attack. That's fine. Fetch shock. Well, they don't want to shock, so I might have lethal by next turn. Land? Maybe? Land? Please? <laughs> Pretty please? Uh, this is going to get bounced. Uh, yep, I can't do anything about this. Could counter that if I had the option. Uh, so I'm going to attack for three. Can this thing kill me? Goes up to eight. You could go fat shock to kill me. But can I attack for two? Put you to six. Fat shock goes to a 10 10, which still could kill me. But I'm not strictly dead. I guess I could attack for three chump block if you want to fetch shock. No, but you could just have the fetch land in play. So I'll just attack for two. They don't have to crack it.
Well, that's the end of this game. Thanks for coming out, folks. Thanks for coming out. Is there any way I can win this? Okay, I get hit for seven. They can play this thing. Oh, they don't want to attack. Okay. Because there is a chance I can race. Land. Oh, come on. What is this, turn six? I literally didn't draw land in six turns. Oh, wait a minute. This can attack. Okay, hold on. I can, at I can attack for one. Natural island walk, baby. Okay, so I attack for one. Put you to five. You're forced to attack with both. I have to chump block. I attack for three. That's not enough. I don't think I can get out of this. I don't think I can get out of this. Attack for one. This thing becomes an eight. Play that. Jump block. <clears throat> no. I have no idea what my plan is to win this game, but it's going to start by passing. Okay, I've seen enough. I've seen, I've seen enough. When was the line? Okay, there was one line coming. It was pretty useless at that point. All right, uh, this league is going terrible. But you know what? Let's go for some redemption in round five. We won the die roll. Uh, I hope the hand is okay. I'm going to keep it. If we can draw a land and not get wastelanded on the way, uh, that would be nice. Maybe we can get... I don't think... I, did I get True Name Nemesis and play once this entire league? I don't think that happened even once. And that's actually a key card in uh, quite a few matchups that we played. It's very good in lands. It's very good in Death Shadow. It's like a pretty big game changer. Like, normally we're supposed to be good versus these... Well, I don't know if this is a Delver-style deck or a Death Shadow-style deck. Another Dock Hand. I have two Force of Wills. I almost feel like I should be using these on uh, the Dock Hands. Okay, I'm going to, I don't know, play two Dock Hands, I guess. Okay, you want to daze this? Go for it. I got three unblockables versus you. Three unblockables. We do trickster. If I knew exactly what I was up against, maybe I should hold up some of these, but I'm not. Send in the clowns. They did nothing with their mana. I really have no idea what that means, though. I do not know what this deck... It could be anything. It could be a combo deck. It could be anything at all. It could be a boat. They did not use the ability of ponder. Oh, I see. So there are the top three cards you library, then put them back in any, or any order. You may shuffle. So I guess if that in the chat, if it says, oh, they, they were thinking about dazing that. You wanted to daze that so badly, did you? This really feels like I'm playing like merfolk aggro here. Swamp. Can we Bowmasters? That's probably worth forcing. Uh, what else could be bad here? Yeah, let's just force this. I'm fine forcing this. If they force back, that's fine. 
Okay, let's see how they play this. Okay, that's going to get picked off. Uh, then we have the opportunity to play our trickster. And the point is to tap down the orc army so that if they want to block, they have to block with their bowmasters, which I'm hoping is the more valuable card. Look at my island walkers. I got a four turn clock here. You got no clock. Your clock hasn't even started. Still not sure what I'm up against. Could be a Beanstalk deck for all I know. I don't think I don't know if Beanstalk plays Bullmasters though. They had Dress Down in the main. Coligan's Command. That's so rude. That's like a modern card. What is going on here? You might as well attack. You can't you can't block any of this. Like you cannot block any of this. Yeah. It's got island walk. Natural El Natural Island Walk. Okay, is this where the days comes in play? No, nope, no days. But they do have dress down. I mean, they they showed us that over here, so they could just go dress down, eat this thing up. Yeah, true name, not what it used to be. Uh, sadly, it's still a strong card, though. Still a strong card. It's just uh, not even close to invincible. I don't even think it would see great. It would definitely see some play in modern, but not to the extent that people think. Seek the beast. Don't be fetching anything. Force of will, undercity. Uh, so force of will and uh, undercity sewers. Oh, that's the surveil land. Did you find some crap in those sewers? All right, in game five, we finally get a true name nemesis in play for the first time. Right, send in six damage. Sure. Assassin's Trophy. It's more and more looking like a modern deck. Uh, I'll just keep this in my hand. I sort of expect to win the game next turn. What do we have here? Oh, an Uro! Okay, so you can gain some life. I still have lethal, though. But you need to find... Um... Is this cast from hand? Alright, so this game might be a little closer. Actually, my opponent can just completely make a comeback here. I mean, if they kill one of these, then I'm just dead. Okay, we're going to sack a creature, so now I need a lord to win, because I'm only attacking for four. I'm still winning the race, though. Lord off the top. Any lord. Okay. Any lord will do. You got a counter? No? Boop. My opponent says no. Yes. That's how Merfolk does it. We just rip cards right off the top. Alright. Uh I don't have Krakus in this deck, because I didn't know I didn't know if I needed it or not. Let's see. What do I want to bring in here? I don't even know if I want... I don't know if I want to... Okay, Surgical Extraction for sure. That deals with Uro relatively well. Um, don't know if Dismember is good. Wasteland is fine. I need to, like, look into, like, my really old, deep... Uh, like, my year-old sideboard notes, whether I want Force of Will or not. Trickster is... It's, like, okay... Maybe Hexcatcher is not that good here because of the uh, Bowmasters. 
Okay, let's say we want to bring in all the wasteland too. Let's say we want to bring in a trickster. Okay, let's take out the hex catcher. That's vulnerable to bowmasters. I don't want to get eaten up by bowmasters. No one likes to get eaten up by bowmasters. What else is, is, are, is in these decks? Should I bring in the other trickster, take out a dismember? Maybe. Okay. I don't know what I'm spending Force of Will on. Could be a mistake. This hand looks like a mistake. I'll keep it though. It's just so threat light. Uh, I guess we can start off with an Ottawara into Ether Vial and pass. They surveilled into a land that they're putting on top. So wait, this is an island, so if they wanted days, they could bring it back to their hand. I'm really not familiar with these deck lists to say one way or another what they should do, but I, I'm going to play another Aether Vial. Play Wasteland. We'll crack it, hit the Undercity Sewers. Dome Asterisk can resolve. It's not that big of a deal. We'll have creatures coming down that will compete with it. It's pretty important that... Well, I wouldn't say it's pretty important. I just don't want them to get to Uro range. Once Uro resolves, it's sort of awkward. The gains real life, they put more lands in play, just feels like they sort of get out of control. Uh, these are all convenient cards, pass. A bad lands. You can't play Uro off of this mana. You need a blue and a green source. Well, if nothing else, I'm really ha what one thing I really enjoyed about like uh, grinding Legacy is that the games were pretty fast. Like you know, we're, we can maybe get through this entire league in about an hour and a half. Which is nice. Baleful Strix. Hate that card. Uh, I think I'm going to resolve. let it resolve. I think we're in a spot where I'm just going to try to like really empty my hand the best that I can. And then protect it at the best that I can. Okay, we'll tap. This Strix down. They have an island now, so we can play our Tide Shaper. The third Ether Vial is not the card I was looking for here. Certain aspects of Tishana's Tide. Well, finally, maybe we get to see some play out of Tishana's Tide Binder. That would be lovely. So, nah. some problems here is uh, well, they're they're holding up removal for sure. So if I play Lord of Atlantis, it's just gonna like die. And if I force protect it, probably they will just protect it again next. They'll they'll kill it next turn. Do I have any other good play though? Maybe not. All right, I guess I'm just going to go all in on this. We're all in. Oh, look at that. Is there a chance in hell that they play with days in this deck? Like, pro probably not. But at the same time, 
this this ether valve sort of rotting in my hand um because if i play the ether valve i'll be i'll be tapped out and i can't pay for days okay do you know what? i'm just gonna pass probably they don't play days but i don't know for sure brainstorm brainstorm away Now I'm hoping they play Uro and then I can Tishan as Tidebinder, uh, one of the, the like draw card gain life trigger. And then we swing in big. Swing in for big. Okay, so they don't have Lightning Bolt, at least not yet. Uh, they might find it with Brainstorm. Lightning Bolt, uh, Red Elemental Blast. Opt to do nothing here. So awkward. Well, I don't have a kill or anything like that if I play Tishana's Tie Binder here, so I guess I just don't. Or do I? I can hit for I can hit for ten, put my opponent down to twelve. That's a lot of damage. You know what? I'm gonna be patient. I don't have to be patient, but I'm gonna be patient. Come on, true name nemesis. Could use one of those. True name gnosis is good. That is great. Okay, so we will again just attack with our uh, three threes. I expect Lord of Atlantis is probably going to perish. Uh, we vile in another one to save the day. Uh, do I counter that? You know what? I think I'm just going to counter this or attempt to counter it. And then maybe from here, we play the other Lord. Hit for eight. I'll put them in a big squeeze, big squeeze. I just realized how dangerous this situation is if, um... okay, so you draw a card. Is that even useful to you at all? Maybe. You know what? You're clearly desperate. Clearly desperate. There's no way you would play that. My opponent says they cry. You should! <laughs> I don't even know. What did we even beat here? Is this just like four or five color anything? Like, I just don't get what we were up against. Uh, I think that should be good enough to win. All right, we, uh, we ended up going 2-3. Well, it was not the greatest showcase of this deck. Uh, let's go back. Let's see what, what went right, what went wrong. So what went right, we were able to win some games. What went wrong, I wouldn't say our hands were great. I mean, still, like, you know, we don't have Silver Gill Adapt, so we aren't going to get that extra card that uh, I, I wouldn't say depend on, but, like, I really want uh, in the in a lot of these matchups. Also, like, Silver Gill Adapt's always smooth, like, smooths your hands out, smooths the curve. It's always something you can play off of, like, Wasteland Mana. Now all we have is Hex Catcher. Uh, so that makes, like, the, uh, the deck, like, a little bit more heavier on blue. I think Tishana's Tidebinder is a good card. We just never got to see it shine. Maybe I have like maybe one too many Dock Hands in the deck. But Dock Hand was fine. It wasn't great, but it was fine. I could play it. Uh, maybe I am misplaying with this card. For example, I don't think it was all that impactful in the, um, what's it called? Uh, the matchup with um, the 8 cast matchup where the patchwork artifact deck. So this is probably a little weak. On the other hand, like, our hands were just very clunky in most of our matches. Maybe that's just the nature of the deck now, though, unfortunately. It's just going to end up being more clunky than I, I would like. But I still think, like, there's a little, lot more room to this. I So I'm going to play test this a little bit more. This may or may not be my final list going into the NRG series. I at least went 2-3. Didn't win against anything 
or I don't know what what was the I have no idea what we played against in that fifth round. It was just like a big pile of cards, huge pile of cards. That's a that's as far as I you know. It was like a legacy pile of it was a pile of legacy staples is effectively what we were up against. And and a lot of the matchups where True Name Nemesis would have been very good uh, in the eight cast deck versus lands versus Death Shadow uh, didn't even draw it, or we just got wastelanded out of the game because that. That's just legacy, folks. That's legacy. But I'm sure that there's some a lot of room for improvement uh, in the deck list. I just don't know where to put that improvement. But I'll figure it out. All right. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button if you love legacy merfolk. And I will see you next time, my fish fam. Take care.